what they are trying to do to your rightful president. That's a laughing matter. There will be no indictment of my son. Oopsies. Yeah, so it looks like she just picked a whole bouquet of oopsie daisies, didn't she? What's interesting about this QAnon -er that we're listening to right now, Julie Green, is the fact that she claims that what she's saying right now are words from God himself. She's basically writing a new book of the Bible, the book of Green, verse 3, chapter 2, or whatever, that kind of thing, for real. And what was it she said in mid-March 2023? What they are trying to do to your rightful president, i.e. Trump, that's a laughing matter. Okay. There will be no indictment of my son. Uh-oh. <laughs> I love it, dude. I love it when QAnoners stick their foot in their mouth and just keep picking those oopsie daisies. It's fantastic. Anyway, so like I said, this is QAnoner Julie Green, who believes that Trump is like a prophet of God. Okay. And or, or I'm sorry. Let me take a step back. She believes she's a prophet of God and Trump is a messiah. No joke. She believes that Trump is supposed to take political control and spark Armageddon and everything. For real. That's where her head's at. She's been saying even more psychotic stuff in recent months. So let me just take a step back, listen to what she had to say all the way back before he got indicted and see what she's saying now. And we're going to compare the two. All right. Remember, everything that she says, everything you hear from her today going to be a message from God himself. Okay? All right, listen. Check this out. I told you, my children, don't worry about the things that you see. Because the things that you see are temporary. What they are trying to do to your rightful president, that's a laughing matter. Dude, I, I am way too entertained by her failure at this stuff. It's just fantastic. There will be no indictment of my son not the way they wanted it to go. Oh, no, no, no. The indictments? Oh, yes, there will be indictments, I promise you. But it will be indictments for those want the ones, excuse me, for the ones. Notice she went back and she corrected herself. The reason she did that, even though we knew what she meant, she stepped back and corrected herself anyways so that we had complete clarity because... These are words from God in her mind. And she's writing a new book of the Bible, effectively. She wants to make sure there is complete and total 100% clarity on what she's saying because she fancies herself a new Moses or a new Matthew or a new John the Revelator or whatever. No, I'm dead serious, okay? Oh, and she's a QAnoner, of course. Dude, I eat this up. I just love this. This is fantastic, isn't it? Quick interjection. I won't take long. I just wanted to tell you guys, YouTube's algorithm operates off of a few factors. Watch time, whether or not you subscribe, and whether or not you like something. So if you really want to help my channel, I would appreciate it if you guys watch the video to the end. If you don't watch it to the end, just watch a little bit longer than you would have otherwise. I would appreciate that very much. All right, let's get back to the video. Oh, yes. There will be indictments, I promise you. But it will be indictments for those want the ones, excuse me, for the ones who are trying to make this indictment. Because Okay, so she's saying the people who are trying to indict Trump are the ones that are actually going to be indicted and Donald Trump will not be indicted. This is the prophecy that she got from God, okay? To make this indictment because this is a time of seed time and harvest. And I told you before, many, many times, in many other words I have given to you. They are reaping a harvest. They have no idea what's coming. So when she says this is a time of seed time and harvest or whatever, what she's saying is this is the end. This is, you know, we're at the end and people are going to reap what they've sown pretty soon like armageddon is coming any five minutes is what she's saying now they've been saying this for thousands of years at this point these you know religious nutter butters of epic proportions but 
you know, as they get more fanatical around Donald Trump, they get more urgent and believe that he is going to bring about the end. It's just crazy, dude. I am an end to their plans because I am the great I am. Right. So she's once again pretending to speak with God's voice and quoting from an Old Testament verse. Okay, fantastic. Okay, so that was what she said before Trump was indicted when there were rumblings that he'd be indicted. That was in mid-March 2023 before the first indictment, which was by Alvin Bragg in New York for falsifying business records over the hush money payments to Stormy Daniels, so on and so forth, right? And then Trump was indicted four times. Fantastic. Love everything about it. Okay, so check this out. Mid-August 2023, he's been indicted four times so far, I think. Are we up to four, five, six? I have no clue what we're up to now. He's been indicted a billion times. And Julie Green is now going to, what, amend what she said? Or I don't know. Is this new prophecy she's giving us? I guess it's just new prophecy. Okay, check this out. Mid-August 2023. Another whistleblower will come forward with proof on how Nancy Pelosi and the establishment set up January 6th. Dude, why are we still talking about Nancy Pelosi? Isn't she out of office now? And why are we still talking about how January 6th was a setup? No, it wasn't, okay? January 6th was very obviously an insurrection attempt by Donald Trump's most ardent supporters. And they've, you know, I I'm talking the Oath Keepers, the leader of the Oath Keepers, Stuart Rhodes, and the leader of the Proud Boys at the time is Enrique Tarrio. He could not be in D.C. at that moment, but his second in command stood in for him and acted as battlefield generals, both of those two, Stuart Rhodes and uh, what was his name? Biggs, something Biggs. Joe Biggs, yeah, he's a, a Proud Boy lieutenant, and his name was Joe Biggs. So anyways, he was just sentenced to 15 years, 17 years, some crazy thing like that. They were acting as battlefield generals for an insurrection attempt that was orchestrated or that was arranged by Roger Stone, uh, working directly with Roger Stone, who was arranging it on Donald Trump's behalf. So, uh, Janu I mean, they even had, like, caches of weapons, like, placed around the area. They had buried weapons caches so they could, once they got a hostage, which is what they were aiming for, they could grab these weapons caches and go in and, you know, force what they wanted to happen to happen, which is to keep Donald Trump in power and turn the U.S. into a dictatorship. That was the idea. You remember that video of that woman, Ashley Babbitt? attempting to climb through the window to get Mike Pence, and that guy had to pull the trigger? That was their attempt to take Pence as a hostage. I am not joking. So, I, you know, I just want to drill this in real clearly. Donald Trump, the Proud Boys, the Oath Keepers, the far right, they were responsible for January 6th. God, if, he, you know, Julie Green had his ear, which she doesn't, but if she did, God would tell her, that because that's the fact of the matter i'm sorry that's just what it is and apparently god doesn't lie so according to the bible another whistleblower will come forward with proof on how nancy pelosi and the establishment set up january 6th to impeach trump and to completely remove him from any chances to run again like why would she even bother doing that wow so nancy pelosi set trump up so that they could impeach him for January 6th. A computer is about to surface to show the plot to take down the president, to blame him for what they had caused that day. A computer is about to surface. Wait a minute. Okay, let's just wait. One more time. One more time. A computer is about to surface to show the plot to take down the president. A computer is going to surface to show the plot to take down the president. Like, seriously, is she ever going to give up? Is she ever going to, like, come back to reality with the rest of us and realize that literally nothing that she has prophesied has come true? Is she ever going to come back to reality and accept the fact that she is completely full of it? Has been since the very beginning? Probably not, right? Typical QAnon, I'm sorry, man. 
to blame him for what they had caused that day. Right. So a computer is going to surface to exonerate Donald Trump. OK, great. If that's what you believe, fine. Refutable proof that will shred the lie of that day in January of 2021. Okay, so remember, in the previous clip, she was so specific. She wanted you to get the correct message. Remember, she messed up and she said, for the one. She wanted to make sure that she said it properly and exactly because words matter when you are translating this stuff from God's voice in her mind, right? And then she just goes along and makes a mistake like saying refutable proof instead of irrefutable proof. Refutable proof. Refutable proof means that it's possible to prove wrong. What she meant to say was irrefutable proof. If this message was coming from Julie Green, that's the kind of mistake I'd expect. If this message was coming from God, that mistake wouldn't make any sense. Little mistakes like that should prove to you she doesn't have God's ear or God doesn't have her ear or whatever the hell. Somebody's ear is in somebody's mouth. I don't know exactly whose is in whose, but the point is she's not talking to God and vice versa. It's not happening. I know it feels like I don't have to prove this. I, it feels like this is obvious, but it's not obvious to everybody. She's got a massive following. She gets more views than I do on my main channel frequently. She's got hundreds of thousands of regular viewers. Over the course of a month, she gets millions of unique views. It's like there's this undercurrent of Trump support. These are like the supposed prophets that work underneath the barrier like where nobody is really paying attention except for other trump supporters but all the other trump supporters are watching it you know that's why i talk about this woman and others like her Stu peters is another maybe not influential in the circles that you and i run in but they are influential in the circles that your grandma runs in or your uncle jerry who's always talking about how great trump is or whatever extremely influential in those circles. Keep listening to Julie Green here. So she says she's got refutable proof. Okay? Refutable proof. Fantastic. Refutable proof that will shred the lie of that day. In well, if it were refutable proof, then it wouldn't shred any lie because it would be proven wrong because it's refutable. Again, this type of language here is what I'd expect to hear from somebody who was lying about hearing a message from God. It's not the type of mistake I'd expect to hear from somebody who is actually talking to God. That will shred the lie of that day in January of 2021. A senator is about to have a massive heart attack, and it will surprise you on who it really is. A senator, okay. Well, let's see here. There are 100 senators federally, right? And then we've got how many uh how many state senators? Wait, the constitution authorizes a senate of varying number, currently 63 members, assembly of 150 who are elected from districts throughout the state of two-year terms. That's for New York. Okay, I don't know exactly how many like state senators we have. We have uh I don't know if you guys are aware of how this works i'm sure somebody in the chat or somebody watching this or whatever doesn't is not aware of this so i'll explain it and people who already know it will forgive the explanation the state governments operate very similarly to the federal government in fact it's basically exactly the same governors are like the president states even have a a senate and a house of representatives exactly like the federal government has right so we have so we have like 435, 430, I think 438 maybe House members federally, and then 100 senators or somewhere in that vicinity, right? But West Virginia, for example, they have like two of their own state level senators and then like 150 House members or something like that. And they vote on bills exactly the same way that the federal government does. Just looking here, the Constitution of 
New York State, authorizes a Senate of varying number, currently 63 members. So New York State has 63 state senators and an assembly of 150 members, which I'm assuming is the House of Representatives of New York State. So we're talking, uh, I don't know, 63, just take that as an average number, right? 60, we'll say 63 senators per state. You got 50 states plus the 100 federal senators. I mean, we're, th we're talking thousands of people. 3,250 is what I just came up with, just based off of that back of the envelope, envelope calculation. And she's telling us, what was it she said? 2021. A senator is about to have a massive heart attack, and it will surprise you on who it really is. I mean, there are like thousands of senators in the United States. It is statistically unlikely that a senator in the United States would not have a heart attack. This is an old cold reading trick you can see psychics do. And you can see televangelists do it all the time, too. We're watching it right now. Here's another example of this with a guy named Hank Kuhneman. He's a friend of Kenneth Copeland's. He does this exact type of cold reading trick. I mean, here's just one super basic example of what I'm talking about when I say cold reading trick. So you're talking to... I don't know. Well, like I said, 100,000 people, right? She's got like hundreds of thousands of people in her audience. Okay? Now, statistically, out of 100,000 people, some of those people are going to blah. That's the key behind what uh, Hank Kuhneman tries here. Listen to this little trick he tries. This is early February 2023. Again, Friends with Kenneth Copeland runs a mega church in Nebraska. Someone, you're watching me right now, and you're like, man, I, I, I lost my keys. I can't find my keys. They're underneath the cushion. I'm serious. It's underneath the cushion. Go do it right now. And if you can, type it and tell people. I'm serious. It's underneath the cushion. You didn't even know that it was there, but it fell out. See what he's doing here? He's talking to how many hundreds of thousands of people? Millions, probably. Statistically, how many of those people lost their keys, fell out of their pants pocket into their couch cushion. Maybe 1%, right? I mean, it's a fairly common thing to take place. Lose your keys in a couch cushion. It's happened to me plenty of times. 1% maybe, right? But when you're dealing with numbers of like a million people, 1% of a million is, what? what is that, 10,000? Yeah, I was right, 10,000. Wow, that was a complete guess. Yeah, it's 10,000 people who actually found their keys in their cushion like Hank just suggested. And guess what? He now has a follower for life. He has a donator for life because what he just did, that little cold reading trick he did, convinced them that God gave him that message to give to them. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Marjo Gortner. He's the youngest ordained minister ever at four years old. And uh, he eventually grew up to expose these people, these frauds, for what they are, these televangelist types, like we're, you know, like Julie Green. And he was talking about it. He was telling a story about how he found some ink at a, uh, you know, like a, a joke store, like, a, you know, a whoopee cushion store, Spencer's Gifts or something. Found some ink that when you sweat, it turns your skin red where you put it. So you can, like, write dick across somebody's forehead and then they go to work and it, you know they're in a hot car and when they get to work it says dick or something across their forehead well he takes that stuff and he draws a cross on his forehead and he starts doing i'm sorry i did an upside down cross <laughs> and he draws a cross on his forehead like so and he starts doing his you know his whole sermon and he gets wound up and upbeat and starts sweating and they're all praying and falling out in the spirit and everything and people look up and they can see a cross appear on his forehead in red like that you know he told us about this trick and how he did it he exposed televangelists i mean i'm jumping around a lot here but i mean this is supposed to be about julie green right but i want to show you that the tricks that she's using right now are the same tricks that have been used since time in memoriam since scam artists learned that they could scam gullible suckers out of every penny that they own they've been doing the same tricks that julie green's doing right now this is marjo gortner right here and he describes the cold reading trick that i just described listen to this there's, there's one guy 
that gets into it so heavy that he's into, he prophesies. And he told me how he did it. He sat right, I mean, he looked right across the table, back and forth at me. And, and, and he told me how, you know, how he confiscates money. He says he's on, this station is over 40 states. And, uh... Over 40 states, he's on a radio station. So he's a smaller, probably AM radio preacher that gets on the radio and preaches every morning and people turn the radio on on their way to work and they hear him preaching. When I say smaller, I mean he's probably about my size, give or take, right? This is before YouTube, of course. Um, I think that this was made in the 90s originally, this, uh, this video, this expose that Marjo has given us. He'll go on there and he'll be, get on the radio and he'll say, I know that listening to my little voice tonight, that there's some lady out there and you've got $10 put away in a cookie jar. Now God spoke to my heart and told me to go and tell you to get that $10 and get it in the mail and send it to me and God will bless you. God will give you a reward such as you have never known before. Now, cookie jars were a popular place to keep dollars for a long long time back in the uh, 90s right statistically it was unlikely that he would not have reached somebody that fit that exact description somebody that has a cookie jar with a ten dollar bill in it then he comes back to me and he tells me he says if you're on the radio and you're going over 40 states and you're on at prime time you've got thousands of people listening the chances are that there are at least two or three hundred little old ladies who've got a ten dollar bill in a cookie jar and so if you even get you know if a couple hundred go over and get it and send it to you that's two grand that you've made just like that and in addition to getting two thousand dollars just like that you've got a believer for the rest of their lives a believer and a donator it's the exact same cold reading trick that Julie Green is running right now. It's got a little bit of a modification to it, but effectively, it's the exact same thing. A senator is about to have a massive heart attack, and it will surprise you on who it really is. She's giving us a list of prophecies from God right now, like horoscopes, apparently. Another indictment against my David will be announced. My David is Donald Trump. They believe that he's like David from the Old Testament. You know, King David, like somebody really, really special. He, They believe him to be a messiah. When I say they, I mean Julie Green and other QAnon nutcases like that. Your indictment against my David will be announced, but yet another one will fail. Another will be announced. Wow, that's different. I seem to remember. Let's see. What was it she said back in March? What they are trying to do to your rightful president. That's a laughing matter. There will be no indictment of my son. Uh-oh. And what did she just say in August 2023? Another indictment against my David will be announced. But yet another one will fail. Oopsie daisies. There we go. Once again, like it's another example of failed prophecy after failed prophecy after failed prophecy. How does anybody believe her? This woman is not a nobody. She is a leader in the Trumpist pastor undercurrent that exists under the mainstream. You know, you got big famous pastors like Kenneth Copeland who have come out in support of Donald Trump. But he doesn't say a whole lot about Trump nowadays. He used to talk about Trump all the time, and every now and then he does. He says something positive about him. But you've got this undercurrent of pastors who believe in all the same stuff, who believe that they're prophets and that Trump is a messiah and that they are prophesying about Donald Trump, their God emperor, and the message is coming from God himself. Seriously. It's insane. None of these attempts to stop him or this election will prosper, and they will not succeed. Okay, we'll see. I am guarantee this is going to be another failed prophecy. Mitch McCon McConnell is about to be exposed in a major way. Oh, yeah, and she hates rhinos, quote-unquote, you know. Republican in name only now just used as a pejorative for anybody that's a Republican but doesn't support Donald Trump. That's what that means. She hates Mitch McConnell and anybody that Trump calls a rhino. 
and anyone who challenges Trump at all, honestly. She deeply, truly to the bottom of her heart, believes that Trump is the Messiah. And if you are going against Trump in any way, to any degree, which includes challenging him in the primaries, you're going against God himself. I mean, she's got like a billion of these failed prophecies. To tell you the truth, I have no clue how she has any followers left at all after all of these failed prophecies. It's failure after failure after failure. But she's still got a massive following, hundreds of thousands of people, millions even, millions of unique listeners every month come to her to get their information about God and Trump and all this other stuff and all of the news that they get comes from her. This one's from late October 2022, leading up to the midterm elections, okay? Raphael Warnock is a senator in Georgia, and he was being challenged by Herschel Walker. Now, Herschel Walker was a bad candidate, straight up. He very obviously had brain damage from the time he spent playing football. It was obvious to everybody. He said the wackiest stuff. And I have tons of videos on it if you want to see it. But you know what Julie Green prophesied all the way back then? I mean, I, I want to go back and look at some of the old ones right now. We are over a year past this now. Listen to this failed prophecy from this woman from like a year ago. My children, many warnings I have given to you, but there is coming a day that it will be too late. So listen to these words and listen to my prophets. And dare to believe me more than your enemies. She's crying now. More than religion. More than the news stations. Dare to believe me more than the news stations. More than the governments. More than your doctors. More than your bank accounts. Believe me more than your bank account. So your bank account is telling you you have a zero balance, but Julie Green here is telling you that God is telling her that you actually have $10,000 in there and you should dare to believe God rather than the bank account. What? In your bank accounts, dare to believe me more than what you see and what you hear. Herschel Walker will be in the news and victory will be with his name. Uh, just picking those oopsie daisies, right? Just picked a whole bouquet once again. She keeps picking these puppies. She loves these oopsie daisies, doesn't she? I do too. I got to be honest. I love watching her trip and fall flat on her face. It is so enjoyable to watch her fail miserably at prophecy, to prove herself to be a false prophet. Believe it or not, she prophesied even more. Check this now. Early August 2023. This is a newer one once again. I'm just showing you examples of her giving false prophecies and falling flat on her face and giving us new prophecies. I want to get this on record so that we can call her out when she fails again in the future, inevitably. Listen to this one. And this is in bold. The fall of the Biden is about to be seen. And the rise of my trumpet is about to be heard. Okay. Uh, the fall of the Biden will be seen and the rise of my trumpet will be heard. And it's in bold. God told her to write it in bold. Apparently God instructed her to use Microsoft Word and hit, you know, control B before typing this one. I don't even know. Now that is exciting. I so enjoy hearing that sentence. Uh, Again, she is claiming to hear this from God. I so enjoyed hearing that sentence is what she said. Get help, Julie, for real. So enjoy hearing that sentence. All right. Sentences, I should say. A conclusion is about to be seen. A conclusion of this whole mess. I told you, my children, it's all, uh, it wouldn't last forever. A sign of liberty is going to be in the news. Negotiations is going to be in the news. Someone from the party of the red is about to be exposed. They were a wolf in sheep's clothing, a liar, a deceiver, and someone you didn't expect at all. So someone who we really thought was on our side, someone we really thought was for standing up for truth, is really not, and they are going to be exposed. 
So basically what she's saying is during the course of this election season, the 2024 election season, some person who is on the Republican side is going to turn against Donald Trump, their God Emperor. That's what they call him. I'm, I'm not using that flippantly. They call him Geotis, really. The QAnoners do. Uh, the people on the forums like uh, Patriots.Win and some of these other extremist forums, you know, 4chan, 8chan, Julie Green, Telegrams, and all that other stuff, they call him Geotis, for real. So what she's doing here is another perfect example of what Marjo Gortner described earlier, right? I know there's a little old lady out there who's listening right now, has a $10 bill in a cookie jar. God's telling me he wants you to send it to me. She's using the same cold reading trick right now. The thought was for standing up for truth is really not, and they are going to be exposed. All right. Unusual hail is going to be in the news. Locusts. Oh, wow, dude. So we're looking at like full-blown biblical plagues apparently in her mind. Okay. I'm down. Let's see it. I will believe it when I see it, because you know what? You know what I've learned over the years that I have spent covering Julie Green? I've learned that basically everything she says is a lie. You know what the Bible says about people like that, right? Deuteronomy 18.22. I mean, I'm not going to read the whole thing, but it basically says, this is an extremely relevant verse for ex-Jehovah's Witnesses, because it's what frees a lot of them up to realize that the governing body members are full of it. They were full of it from the beginning. They're false prophets, and they don't need to be feared anymore. You may say to yourselves, how can we know when a message has not been spoken by the Lord? If what a prophet proclaims in the name of the Lord does not take place or come true, that is a message the Lord has not spoken. That prophet has spoken presumptuously, so do not be alarmed. Quote, unquote. I'm comfortable saying that Julie Green is very clearly a false prophet, right? I don't know how else to interpret this situation, what she said. I just I, I just don't know how she continues to get viewers and listeners and watchers. 200,000 followers on Rumble. Let's check her Telegram. How many Telegram subbies she got? I have a Telegram exclusively for following nutcases like Julie Green and the Praying Medic and QAnon Nutter Butters of all sorts. Let's see here. Julie Green. Yeah, she's got 72,000, 73,000 followers on Telegram. She's got 200,000 followers on uh, Rumble. Like I said, these people are the undercurrent that runs the Trump movement, that is the Trump movement. And she claims to be a prophet of God. Insane. Let me know what you think about it in the comments. I'm honestly deeply entertained every time she falls on her face. But uh, yeah, tell me what you think.